Hello, I'm Yemont, and I'm back with another Blender Geo Note tutorial. Today we will be creating African lily, aka lily of the Nile. We will be using nose and nose only. I chose African lily because a they're pretty, b they grow literally everywhere where I live, and most importantly they follow this interesting plant structure where a ton of tiny flowers form in clusters. To show off my recently acquired botanical term, it has an umbel inflorescence, flowers that form like umbrellas. I wanted to see if GeoNote can capture this type of structure, and without surprises, GeoNote worked its magic again. Many approaches in this tutorial are also covered in earlier Gen Flower tutorials, so if you haven't watched them yet and want to go a little more in depth, I recommend also checking those out. All right, first the overall plan. We'll draw several curves for the leaves, and then sweep a profile curve across these curves to form the base mesh. As for the flowers, we will generate them on a mesh surface. We will scatter on the surface a bunch of circles and anchor lines, which will decide where the flower outlines and roots should go. We then generate petal curves that go between the outlines and roots then again, sweep a profile curve to form the petal mesh. Next, we will create the stems that go from the flower cluster centers to the ground. We will generate these small secondary stems that connect our flowers to the tip of the central stems. Alright, let's dive in! First, let's create the leaves. Drop in a curve object, delete all the points, and then just draw by hand some curves that look like grass. I'm gonna rotate the camera a little bit each time I draw so that I get a bunch of curves that are more or less spread out in space. Alright, let's call this one leaf curves. Next, create a mesh object, let's call it leaves. Go to geometry nodes, create a new node on it, and let's call it gen leaves. Next, drop in the leaf curve object into our work area. Let's drop in a resample curve node to control the resolution of the curve and set it to 20. Next, let's drop down a curve to mesh. For the profile curve, supply it a mesh line that goes from negative 100 to 100. Voila, already there are planes forming along the curves. To change up the width of these planes, let's drop in a set curve radius node. For the radius, let's connect it to a float curve node, and then feed the spline parameter factor to the value of the float curve. Remember, this factor goes from 0 to 1 for points along the spline, which means I can now use this flow curve to kind of sculpt the width of different parts of the leaf along the spline. I'm gonna keep tweaking this curve until I get something I like, and mm, this is okay. Next, I'm gonna plug the output of the flow curve to another multiply node and connect it to the radius so that we can use the other factor of the multiply as an overall width control. Let's make the multiply factor a top-level group input and call it width. This way we can control the width from the side panel. Now, I also want to create some bendiness on my leaf, because if you look at the cross section right now, it's perfectly straight, which makes the whole thing look very artificial. So let's go to this curve line node, and again use a resample curve node to give it more resolution. Set the count to 20 for now. Now, if we look at this profile curve, it now perfectly goes from negative 1 to 1 along the x-axis. I'm gonna displace these points so that the tips bend upwards a little bit, like this. Alright, let's use a set position. Connect the position to a combined XYZ. Let's also use a separate XYZ and feed the position as the input. So if we just connect everything up, the curve looks exactly the same. But for the y value, if I connect it to another flow curve, and again feed the spline parameter factor to the curve value, our profile curve is now following the shape of the float curve. Great! I'm just gonna make a curve that is 0 at the center and then 1 at the start and the end. Now if we take a look at the final mesh, it's all round and puffy and cute. 
which is awesome, but this is probably too much bendiness. So I'm going to connect the flow curve to, again, another multiply. Fit the other factor to a group input, and let's call it bend. Now, if I slide around the bend parameter, I can control the bend intensity of all the leaf petals. Sweet. All right, that's basically the leaf. Let's reorganize our graph a little bit and extract reusable parts into a node group because this idea of sweeping to form a leaf mesh is very, very useful. These two flow curves are probably going to be inputs. The width is an input. The bend is an input. Everything else should probably go into the reusable group. So let's select them, Control G to put into a group, and let's call it Sweep Petals. Now let's dive into the group and name our inputs. The first one is the width field. Note that this is a field, which means it could have different values for different points. The second one is the width multiply factor, so let's call it width. The third one is also a field, the band field. And the last input is band strength. I'm also going to make the curve resolution group inputs. So let's connect this one and call it central curve resolution. And for this one that controls the resolution of the profile curve, let's call it profile curve resolution. Great. If you want, you can also make this resolution input top level group inputs. And finally, don't forget to connect the results to the group output geometry. And we're done with leaves. All right, now the flowers. Let's drop in an ecosphere. Move it up, scale it down a little bit. Remove some points from the bottom so that it's not so round. Let's duplicate, rotate, and translate, scale it up. And this is going to be the other cluster. All right, let's call this object Flower Surfaces. Create a new mesh object. Let's call this one Flower. And we're going to create a new geometry node onto this object. Let's first drop in the surface mesh object. Drop in a distribute points on faces. And as for the random method, choose Poisson Disk because it would give us more control over how evenly the points are spread out. All right, let's switch our site window to spreadsheet view so that we can see the geometry data better. All right, here are our points. So the distance min field allows me to specify the minimum distance between any two points. So if I crank it up to 0.5, you'll see that we have fewer points that are further apart. Let's just leave it at 0.2 for now. Now, density mass controls the overall density. So if we increase it, you can see that overall we get more points, but it's still capped by the distance min. All right, let's leave it at 10 for now. Next, I'm going to use an instance on point node. For the instance, I'm going to use a curved circle. They're now all pointing upwards, but what we want is to have them align with the normal direction of the surface mesh. So I'm going to use a align Euler to vector node, align the z-axis of the circle to the normal of these points. And voila, our circles are aligned to the normals. Now for the scale, I'm going to use a random float value that goes between 0.2 and 0.4. Hmm, the circles are still overlapping each other quite a bit, so let's try maybe something smaller about 0.1 to 0.2. OK, this looks nice. All right, next, let's generate the root position for the flowers. So very similar to the circles, we're going to duplicate this instance on points node. And for the instance, fit it a curve line. We're going to make the starting point go from 0, 0, negative 1, note the negative 1 here, to 0, 0, 0. So basically, this line is pointing from the negative z direction to the origin. Let's connect everything together. Now we have a bunch of lines, but they're not aligned to the mesh normals. But hey, didn't we just solve this problem for the circles? Let's look at this align Euler to vector node that we just created. We can pretty much reuse its output and plug it into the rotation of the instances directly. And now everything is pointing in the right direction. 
As for the skill, the same thing applies. I'm gonna copy over the random value that we used for instancing the circles and plug it in. It's getting a little hard to see our lines, so I'm gonna select the flower surfaces object, go to object tab, viewport display, display as, change it from textured to wire. There we go. Let's go back to our geometry node and keep previewing those instances. Now we can actually see our anchor lines. Now, because we made our curve line start from 0, 0, negative 1, the instance lines actually all start from inside the mesh and end exactly on the surface. This is handy because we can now put the roots of the flowers at the starting point of the anchor lines and make the petals grow towards the circles that we just created. We can visualize this. So let's first drop down to Realize Instances node after the two instance two points and join them together with the Join Geometry node. Now, if we preview the output, you can see the overall layout of our flowers. One thing I'm noticing is that some flowers are still huge and grossly overlapping with each other. So let's lower the max radius to 0.15 and increase the density a little bit so that we get smaller but more densely packed flowers. All right, before we move on, one last thing to do. Let's drop down to Removed Named Attributes node after the Realized Instances and get rid of the field called ID. Blender probably generated this ID from the Instance on Points node. However, what I realized is if we use another Instance on Points node later, this ID field sometimes messes up the instancing, so let's remove it for now. <laughs> All right, next, let's create the curves for our petals. Let's go to our instance circles, drop down a resample curve node, and for now, set the count to six. We're going to instance one petal curve for each point on the resample curve. So this count is going to represent how many petals there are for each individual flower. We could even use a random value to randomize how many petals there are for each flower. I'm gonna use an integer between 4 and 7. Alright, next, let's instance a bunch of curves. Drop in our old friend, instance on points. For the instance, I'm gonna use a Bezier curve with all the points and the handle set to 0, 0, 0. Don't forget to realize these instances. And for now, you can't see anything because all of the curves have zero length. We could very easily visualize this by connecting it to another instance on points node and use icospheres as the instances. Let's make our icospheres smaller, maybe just give them a radius of 0 0.02. Now we can save the curve points. Let's put these two nodes into a node group and call it visualize points. And this is the latest addition to our utility node groups. All right, next, I'm going to use a set position node to move the starting point of our curves. Let's think for a second about how to select only the starting points. Well, we're dealing with a bunch of Bezier segments that each have two points, right? So the starting points are those with even indices, the zeros, the second, the fourth, and so on. All right, let's put down an ID node, modulo it by 2. If the result is equal to 0, then it means it's an even index point, and I'm going to select it. Now, if I give this point an offset, you can already kind of see the lines forming, which is great. That means the selection is working. For the actual position, let's use a sample curve to sample from the anchor lines that we have created earlier. Let's find where those lines are. Well, it's getting a little hard to tell which is which. Um, I think this remove name attribute here has our flower outline circles. So let's put a frame around it and call it flower circles. Similarly, this node has our flower anchor lines. So let's frame it and call it flower anchors. Let's plug our flower anchors as the curve input of the sample curve and connect position to position. Well, something is happening, but it looks wrong because we're always sampling with curve index 0. Let's drop down a curve info node. It's tempting to directly connect the curve index to index here, 
But this would be wrong because it would be using the indices of the petal curves, and there are way more petals than there are flowers. So the right indices to use is actually the indices of the flower curves. So let's drop down a capture attribute right after the resample on the flower curves. The value to capture is the curve index of the flower curves at this point. Now if we feed the result to the curve index of the sample curve, preview our last node. There you go, a bunch of petal curves radiating from the flower anchors. Next step, let's bend our petal curves a little bit by moving the Bezier handles around. I'm gonna use a store named attribute to set a vector attribute on points called handle left. As for the value, let's use position connected to an add node so that we can use the other parameter to offset the position. To preview the outputs better, let's use a join geometry to join the petal curves and the flower outline curves together. There we go. For each petal curve, I'm gonna compute a vector that starts from the end point and points towards the center of that flower. I'm then gonna use this offset to move the individual Bezier handles of the end points. First, let's compute the center of the flowers. So drop down a sample index. Let's connect the curves right after the resample curve. And then as for index, plug in this capture index that have the indices of the flower curves. All right, here's the trick for finding the curve centers. We're gonna compute a position in the domain of spline. That's all you got to do. Blender is gonna compute the average position of all the points on that spline for you. Because we want an offset, let's use a subtract node to subtract the end point position from the center. Let's normalize this vector and connect it to a scale so that we can use the other factor to control the band intensity. Connect everything together and preview the store named attribute node. Well, there's definitely a lot of bendiness happening. Let's change the scale factor to 0.1 to make it less intense. There we go, that looks quite nice. Now we're ready to generate the pedals themselves. Let's reuse the sweep pedals node group that we created for the leaves. I'm gonna leave width at 0, 0.0 for now. And as for the width field field, we can use a spline parameter factor fitted to a flow curve and use that to sculpt the overall shape of the pedals. Pretty much exactly like what we did for the leaves. All right, I'm gonna reduce the width to make the petals even slimmer. Now for the bend field, let's duplicate the flow curve, change up the shape so that it's the lowest in the center, connect the same spline parameter as the value input and connect the output to the bend field of the sweep petals. Now our petals all curve upwards a little bit, which is cool. I'm gonna lower the resolution of the central and profile curve because these petals are kind of tiny, so we don't need that many geometries on them. If you look at these petals closely, you might notice an issue, which is that our petals are not facing the center of the flower. It's not that severe of a problem, but if you really want to fix it, here's a screenshot of a couple of nodes that could fix the problem. It took me a while to figure out, and I still think it's very annoying to set up, so I'll spare you the details here. All right, this whole area that instances Bezier curves and offset their handles is super useful for generating the backbone curves of plant structures, like leaves, or stems, or petals. So again, you guessed it, let's put them into a node group. We will need the Bezier segment node, the instance on points, realize instances, set positions, and store named attribute, and these three nodes here for selecting the event indices. Control G to group them, tap to go one level up, and let's rename this to instance curves. Let's give the group inputs better names. So the first input is the curve, the second input is the position of the starting points, so let's call it start positions. The third input is used as the offset of the endpoint Bezier handles. So let's call it end handle offsets. 
and because this is an offset on the position, that means the position and the add node here should also go into the node group. Let's move them inside. Let's go one level up and make sure everything still looks correct. Well, it looks okay, but our curves are bending upwards in a very strange way. So let's troubleshoot what went wrong. Ah, okay, it turns out this position used to be connected to the subtract. Remember, this is how we computed the center of the flower. So let's just reconnect it. Cool, now everything looks correct. Before we forget, let's reorganize and annotate our graph. So this whole session here is for generating the petal curves. These guys over here are also for the petal curves. So let's move them inside. This drawing geometry isn't used anymore, so let's get rid of that. Our instance curves node, for some reason, has two geometry output, so one of them is probably a duplicate. Let's get rid of that, reconnect everything, and make sure the whole graph still looks correct. Okay, much better. Next, we will generate the stems that hold our clusters of flowers to the ground. So I want to generate curves that start at the centers of our mesh islands and go all the way to the origin. To do that, let's go to where we imported the object of the flower surface. Put down a viewer node to preview it. How do we find the center of individual mesh islands? Well, turns out this is less straightforward than I thought. We do have a mesh island node, but that only gives you the island index and total number of islands. It does not give you the center, so we'll have to get creative about it. Let's drop down a set position and an accumulate field. We're going to sum up a vector value that is the position of every point in the geometry. Meanwhile, we're going to feed the island index to the group ID of the accumulate so that we can accumulate separately for each individual mesh island. To get the island center, we still need to divide the sum by the number of vertices in each island. So we're going to duplicate the accumulate field, and then for each point, accumulate a constant value of 1, and still use the mesh island as the group ID. Next, let's drop in a divide to divide the total position sum of each island with the total count. Let's connect the output to position. Now let's preview the output from set position. Drop in a visualize points to make the points visible. And voila, there are our island centers. Let's get rid of the visualizer. We can use a merge by distance node to collapse all the overlapping points. So if you check our spreadsheet here, you can see we now only have two points. With the centers created, we can now instance curves onto them. So let's connect a instance curves to these points. And as for the starting position, we can simply use 0, 0, 0, the origin. There are our stem curves. To bend these curves, let's once again offset their Bezier handles. So let's use the spline length, because I want the bend amount to scale with the length of the curve. Connect it to a multiply, then connect the output to the z value of a combined xyz. Then let's connect this vector to the end handle offsets. Now we can use this multiply factor to control the bendiness of our main stem curves. To create the actual stem mesh, we will use a curve to mesh and connect the profile curve to a curved circle. Set the resolution to something really low to keep it simple, like 6 or 12. Use a set curve radius node to control the thickness of this tube. And for now, I'm going to set it at something like 0.1 or 0 0.05. Let's put these three nodes into a node group and call it sweep tube. I'm going to make the radius a group input as well as the tube resolution. To be able to see everything together, let's use a join geometry node to join our petals together with the stems. There we go, we're so close to being done. 
The last thing to generate is this little connector stems that hold individual flowers to the tip of our central stems. As for how to do it, well, this is really old news by this point. We're gonna again instance Bezier curve segment. Let's find our flower anchor lines. I'm gonna use a separate geometry, and for selection, use a endpoint selection node. Use one as the start size and zero as the end size. This way, we select only the starting points, which are the flower roots. To make sure the selection works, let's drop in a visualize points. And voila, these are the points to instance curves onto. Let's drop in the instance curves node. Now, we already have our endpoints, but where should the starting points be? Well, if we go to our flower surface object info node, the center is kind of right here, fed to the set position. So let's drop in a store named attribute node right after our flower object to store a vector with the name of island center. Let's feed the island center, which is computed by dividing the sum with the count to um, our store named attribute. Now, if we rewire the graph to distribute points on this geometry that has the island center attribute, guess what? This attribute gets carried over through different parts of the graph, and it exists in the latest instance curves node that we've just created. That means we can simply use a name attribute node to read a vector called island center. If we plug it in as the start positions of the curve instances, there's the curves for our connector stands. As for the end handle offset, I'm gonna connect it to a random vector that goes from negative one, negative one, negative one to one, one, one. I'm gonna make the offset scale with the length of the spline, and also scale with a bend intensity factor that I can control. Now, if I drag this slider around, you can see that I get different amounts of bendedness. All right, let's set it to 0.2 for now. Finally, let's use a sweep tube node to give this curve some volume. So I'm gonna leave the radius to 0.01 to make them quite thin. And let's connect the output to the join geometry to join everything together. Ta-da, here's our full plant. Completely procedural, generated with math and zero assets. All right, before we forget, let's connect our final output as the geometry output. The cool thing about this setup is it's so easy to create new flowers. I can simply duplicate different mesh islands, move it around, scale it, rotate it, and get new clusters of flowers. It is a fair amount of nodes to set it up, but once you have it, you can freely enjoy the joy that is proceduralism. You can change up the shape of the mesh or the leaf curves however you like. The result is very precise and fast. There are also many parameters in this node system that you can expose as top-level group inputs so that you can easily tweak them from the side panel. For example, this random value node determines the scale with which we instance our flower circles. It basically decides how big our flowers are. We can expose its min and max as top-level group inputs and call them flower radius min and flower radius max. Now, if we go to the geometry node modifier side panel and tweak these two parameters, we can pretty much update in real time the min and max radius of our flowers. Other potentially interesting examples? You could expose controls for the random seed that is used in the various random values, or maybe the density used in the point distribution, or maybe the min and max values for how many petals there should be in each flower, or the depth of the flower. That's it. That's our African lily. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, don't forget to save.